and welcome to this video. As I said in my last video that I prepared for XOR or XOR linked list, but I ended up recording for Red Black Tree. So here I present the XOR or XOR linked list. Mm -hmm. So uh, in a W linked list, we store two pointers for accessing next and previous nodes of the linked list. One way to optimize that would be storing the ZOR of next and previous addresses in the node. So suppose we are working on 64-bit environment, then the cost for storing the addresses will reduce from 16 bytes to 8 bytes because pointers are 8 bytes in 64-bit architectures. It is useful, uh, there is double L, it should be single L. It is useful in environment where memory is at a premium, for example, in embedded devices. But in modern systems, uh, apart from embedded devices, even when we talk of a phone, a phone today has like 4 GB, 8 GB, or 12 GB kind of RAM. So certain algorithms which were useful in past, the usefulness has decreased. This is one of the reasons that I have not covered the sorting algorithms like external sort or uh, there are two variations. One is polyphage merge sort uh, or cascaded merge sort. I have not covered both the algorithms when I was doing the uh, sorting part in data structure algorithms, it will come very soon. Tomorrow's video will be on, uh, not tomorrow's, day after tomorrow's video will be on uh, AVL3 and then I will show you external sorting using polyphage and cascaded merge shots. So these algorithms are rendered kind of obsolete. Now note that I have written that Singly, ZOR linked list, in this case, you will store the ZOR of current and next node. It does not make sense because you are forcing a ZOR linked list design on a singly linked list. A singly linked list usually stores only one pointer. Now, one pointer will cost you 8 bytes in 64-bit environment. But even if you store ZOR, it will cost you the same amount of memory that is 8 bytes. So it does not make sense at all to do zoring in singly linked list. In W linked list, yes, it makes sense that you will save 50% of the memory for storage of pointer. Now assume that you have a structure in which the data is like 40 bytes or maybe 100 bytes of uh, structure is there and instead of storing 116 bytes you are storing 108 bytes so your memory reduction would be close to 7 to 8 percent but if the structure is small say the structure is an integer okay in that case you will be storing 12 bytes instead of 20 bytes so your memory reduction is 40 percent so depending on the use case you should choose this algorithm carefully the memory saving may not be as much as you think with that out of the picture let's head into the code okay so as usual we have three headers studio.h stdlib.h for malloc, stdf for size and score t. We have a typical uh, structure which we always use. It has an integer data. And uh, then we have a self-referencing pointer which is both. Now the ZOR takes two addresses of node A and B. If it is null, I assign it to zero. And if it is B, I assign it to zero as well. So <clears throat> we don't have a pointer type in the sense that 
uh, U in PTR is a type in C++. C does not have that kind of type. There's a PTR diff underscore T is there, but that's not a pointer type. So what I do is I cast the pointers to size underscore T, which is unsigned long. Detail, you should know that by now that size underscore T is large enough to accommodate any pointer. In fact, the argument to malloc, calloc or realloc is size underscore T. So I do the czar and then cast it back as an adjust and send it. We first look at, uh, let's look at outline. Okay. Let me move it. So we first look at main function. Main, we have head tail initialized. We have three functions insert at uh, four functions insert at head, insert at tail, print list, delete from head, delete from tail. So five functions one, two, three, four, five. Yeah. So for insertion, deletion, we have to send addresses of head and tail so that we can modify them. For printing, we just send the pointer. Okay. So we first look at insert at head. We create our new node, we assign the data, we compute the ZOR with head. Okay. Now in the case of insertion, when the linked list is initially null, this point to the head will be null. So it is ZOR of null with null. Now if head is there, we update the both pointer by doing the ZOR. Okay and then we store it otherwise there is double zone you have to be careful with this okay so for, let me explain you why this double zone is needed so suppose head is null in that case this both pointer will be null null zone null is null is zero zero so zero zero will be zero that will be null now here head both is null at this moment okay uh, sorry uh, this won't even come into picture if head is null so we simply assign tail and we update the head and send it what if head is not null if head is not null then what we do is we take the both pointer of head so that we get the address of next and when we do ZOR of head both with null, we get address of the next node. And then we ZOR it with new node. So that head now contains the address of null as well as the next node. So that's how it works. Similarly, inserted tail is very much analogous to that. Uh, it is just applied to tail. Now, if you look at delete from head, what we do is we find out if head is there, if head is not null, because we are deleting from head, so it should be available. So we assign, we first take the heads both node and ZOR with null, that gives us the next node. So we assign it to next. Now we copy the address of head to TMP. Note that we will not dereference TMP because head is freed at the next line. Now we say head is next. So our next node becomes head. Now we test if next node is available. Then what we do is we take next nodes and ZOR it with TMP. Now the address of TMP is the address of head. So this is guaranteed to give us null. Uh, sorry, this would be the address of head. So this will give us the address of next, next node, not guaranteed to null. Uh, I was wrong. So this will head next and let's say third node. So this will give us the address of third node, which we ZOR with null and assign to next both. Otherwise, uh, we assign tail to null if next does not exist. Okay, and uh, delete from tail is 
analogous to that. It is similar, so I'll skip that. Now, print list is very simple. We have head, we assign it to current and previous to null, and we iterate while current node is not null. We print the data. We find the next node by sorting priv with both of current, and then we create the loop. Priv is equal to current, current is equal to next, and then we iterate till current is not null, and then we print the new line and we bail out. So I have tested this code, it works. I will implore you to run it. The code will be available in the GitHub repository. The link will be in description as always. So it was a very simple thing and uh, it works. So I hope that you find this video useful and uh, Thanks a lot for watching. Happy programming.